Modules in Exum Cloud help you accelerate your component creation in a consistent way and increase maintainability, especially when dealing with multi-site implementations. In this video, you learn all you need about getting started with modules, when to use modules, how do they help you in your daily business, how to create them, how to manage them, and how to install them. We have used modules in the past tutorial videos, but we never got into detail what this great feature is about. So let's change that and learn about what modules can do for us. If you take a look into the documentation, you will find that modules bundle templates, settings, branches, media library items, renderings and layouts to be installed on site or site collection level at any time. That means you can install modules on the site creation, but also at any point in time later. This way you can activate features for certain sites and you also get an overview about what features are available in what site. That means modules are a group of functionalities. So for example, everything search related could be a module or all components that are needed for every site can be bundled into a module. There are plenty of examples. Using modules help you creating consistent structures for better maintainability. That means when you create a module, the module pre-creates folders in certain areas where you can store the items that belong to that feature you're bundling in that module. When you clone a rendering, meaning the process of creating a rendering from an existing one, then the items belonging to that rendering will be created in those folders that belong to the module. You can create packages of a certain module, meaning of a feature bundle and transfer that to other XM Cloud environments. So if you need certain item structures also with other XM Cloud installations, you can simply reuse those. When running a CI CD pipeline, you want to reduce manual interactions as much as possible. One way of doing that is using feature toggles to separate deployment and activation of features. Using modules is a similar approach. While you already deploy features to your XM Cloud environment, it does not show effect until you install the module to a site. That activates the feature. Connected to the previous benefit, when installing only those features to your site that are really needed, that keeps your site lean and clean. It also helps authors and marketers to focus on what is needed. A much better user experience for everyone. As mentioned earlier, modules can be created on site or site collection level. In the majority of cases, you will create modules on site level. That means that modules can be installed when a site is created or any time later. When creating a new site collection, you land in the wizard where you can select from a list of modules what should be installed. In general, when you want to explore features, you can install everything. But if you are going for a client implementation, please only install what you really need. You can install it any time later when you miss something. You can select and deselect these modules you want to install. When creating a new site, you find the list of modules on the second tab of the site creation wizard. Also here, I can select the modules I want to install. Some of those are checked by default, some of those not. This is something you can define. I'll show that later. I also mentioned that you can install modules anytime after the site or site collection creation. Here you have two ways of doing so. First, you can install a module to several sites by selecting the module and choosing the script Add Site Module. In the wizard, you can see what sites do not have that module yet and you can install it to all sites that should get this module. Imagine you have created a new feature that has been tested on pre-production successfully and you want to use that now in every site of your Axiom Cloud instance or just a collection of sites. From here, you can simply select the sites and install. Same works for site collection as well. You can also take it from the angle of the site or site collection. On each site or site collection, you have the ability to add modules. In the wizard, you see now a list of modules that have not been installed yet to this site. This comes handy when you want to administer just one site as certain available features have not yet been requested from the marketers of a particular site. In previous videos, we have already created modules, but we never really got into details. All modules are created in the system, settings, project, and then sorted into different folder named after your site collection. 
you can only create modules from the project node by using the insert options. In a wizard, we will provide a name for the module and select the location where the module should be created. This is the folder that is named after your site collection. You can also organize that differently depending on what you create your modules for. Next, you select what item types you want to organize with your modules. That could be templates, branches, settings, renderings, placeholder settings, layouts and media library items. This will create folders named after the module name in the areas you select. This will give you a very consistent structure in all areas. Last but not least, you select if you want to create a module that's available for your site or for your site collection, here named as tenant. This is an older term of site collection. In most of the cases, as already mentioned, you will create modules for the site setup. So let's create a module named General Components. I'm selecting the Company Dev folder. As we want to handle components with that module, we need templates, branches, renderings, and maybe placeholder settings. This is going to be available for the site setup. Let's have a look on the newly created module. Beside the name, you can make the module dependent on other modules, meaning maybe you need a certain preparation from a site collection module before you can install your site module. On the module item, we can check the Include by Default checkbox to ensure that this module appears in any installation list selected by default. Of course, the user has the ability to deselect this module manually. But that is a possibility to indicate that this module is usually installed. By default, this checkbox is not checked. System modules go one step further. By checking the Is System Module checkbox, you ensure that this module is always installed and this is not a choice. This can be used for a base set of features that is mandatory to every site or site collection. Once we create a module, we can take a look at the so-called scaffolding actions. These are all commands or actions you can take on dealing with the installation process of a module. The most used scaffolding action is the Add Site Item scaffolding action. As the name says, it adds an item on module installation. With the Edit Site Item scaffolding action, you can edit existing items and change values of those. Only to name the most used ones, the Execute Script scaffolding action allows you to run a PowerShell script during module installation. This allows a lot of freedom on what can be done with modules. You can see that there are more in the list. You can read about them in the documentation. There are a few things to keep in mind when installing or reinstalling modules. If there is an issue with the installation process, it will stop and not give any notice. That will happen when one of the scaffolding action fails. Most common reason is that the location where the item should be created is not set, the template is not selected, or the name for the item to be created is not provided. If the installation process does not complete, the module is not listed on the site or site collection item. In general, the execution of scaffolding action is done from top to bottom. You can order the steps by ordering the scaffolding actions. When you want to remove a module, you have to remove all items created by that module manually from the site. Next, you would remove the module item listed on site or site collection item. After removing the item from this list, it appears in the installation list again. This way you can also reinstall a module. Now, when is the best point in time to plan your modules? Ideally, when analyzing the requirements and UI UX designs, you will derive the components that you need to create and hand over to the development team for the implementation phase. That is also the time when you structure the components into modules. A few aspects help you making decisions. When you imagine the components being listed in the toolbox or component list for the author, how will they be structured and what sections are used? Another aspect is, are some of the components or features only used by a few websites or not used by all websites? In any case, when naming components and modules, use business language. So consider what can be logically bundled. This concludes the introduction on modules. Hey everyone. Thanks for watching my video. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you don't want to miss further content from our Discover SiteQuiz channel. 
Leave a comment if you have questions or any remarks. See you next time.